Hey everybody, it's your girl Herbal Farm Sister. Hey everybody, it's your girl Urban Farm Sister. So today's video is actually from a Facebook Live I did three years ago where I was talking about hydroponics and growing indoors. So although the video quality isn't the best, it has a lot of vital information that I think you guys need to listen to. Um, I'm actually going to do some uh, better quality, more informative videos on hydroponics in the near future, especially since we're getting into winter and I know people want to grow things indoors and may not be sure how to do that. Um, but for now, I just want you guys to enjoy this video. It's uncut, uh, so everything that was on the Facebook Live, uh, minus the questions going across the screen, um, I answer questions that were asked and things like that. Uh, also, Alexander's in the video, so he's asking questions as well as, you know, interrupting. But the information here, I think, is very vital for you all, all to hear, so that's why I posted it. All right, talk with you guys later. All right, so I decided to do a live feed and talk a little bit about hydroponics. Ah, got bit by a mosquito while sitting out here. Um, but basically, what is hydroponics? So hydroponics is where you're actually growing a plant in water and there's no soil involved. Basically, um, a lot of the foods that we eat are actually grown this way commercially. Um, marijuana is one of those things that is actually grown using hydroponics. So with that being said, you can actually grow food as well as other things using this method. I know I teach classes and things and I know a lot of times people can't come to them. So I just wanted to do this quick little presentation and explain a little bit about um, how to start seeds, some different types of media, um, different methods and things like that. So today I'm gonna actually start some uh, kale and some other things as well um, for my classes that I actually have coming up in October. So people can actually see examples of these plants actually growing. So basically, what you're going to start out with is some type of media to start your seeds in. For this, I'm using what are called root plugs. They look like this. There's also other things like rock wool. You can actually start in um, coconut core. You can start in perlite, whatever. The thing is, it has to be a type of substrate that's inert, which means that it has no charge. Because this is going in water, if something has a charge, it'll change the pH and things of the water, and that could actually affect the plant growth. So when, you, when you're using a, uh, a medium, you have to have something that's inert. So like perlite, it's, it's, it has no charge, there's nothing to it. You could use that in a system. Coconut core, same thing. Are these root plugs or rock wool, they have no charge to them, so they're not going to change the pH of the water or the chemical makeup of the water. So what you do is... You decide what you're going to plant. Like I said, I'm going to start some kale today. You see these seeds are very, very, very small. A trick that I learned is you take the very, very small seeds. You have a, like a plate, a small plate or something, and you pour them on there. Then you take a Q-tip and you wet wet it and what it does that wet it's you're able to pick up that seed so you're able to pick up one seed so you're not wasting seeds you can pick up one instead of like when you're outside and you're planting the seeds 
usually people, they'll just dump a whole bunch of seeds and then they let them come up and then they have to thin them out. You don't want to do that. If you use this method, you can even use this method outdoors. If you use this Q-tip, you can pick up one seed and you're not wasting a whole bunch of seeds and you're not having to um, thin out plants and it actually kill them. So what you do, this uh, root plug actually has a hole and this is where you put the seed in there. So you take the Q-tip and you just put it down in there and you drop the seed in there. And so this plant has been planted. This seed has been planted. So um, I'm going to do another update in a week, and you'll see that this has sprouted. It'll actually start to sprout in, like, the next two or three days. But by next uh, next Sunday, it'll be a pretty decent size um, seedling. And then you can just take little trays like this, and you can put your root plugs down in here, and you'll start your seedlings. Um, I'm also going to start some bigger plants because I have classes coming up in October. October um, that are going to cover how to grow melons indoors, how to grow eggplant, how to grow tomatoes. And so I found some dwarf seeds for these particular plants. And what you do is you just plant even bigger seeds. I actually have some cucumbers that are actually self pollinating, which means they produce only female flowers. And you do the same thing with them you the seeds are bigger so you don't have to use the q-tip method but you just take one seed like this and you take the root plug and you put it in the hole and you've just planted that plant and once you planted that plant you put it in the tray you put it i'm gonna actually put a like a humidity dome over top of it sorry about that my cat just knocked my ipad over um you just take and you put a humidity dome like one of those one of those regular garden trays and you put the humidity dome on top and you'll let the plant sit there for a day or two keep them in the dark and then once you start seeing them sprout you put them in the, underneath a light or you put them out in the sun and you leave a little humidity dome in there and what it is it'll create sorry about that my uh Facebook Live and disconnected for a second. But basically what I was saying is that um, at this stage in the game, when you're actually starting seeds, you don't have to provide the plant with any type of um, fertilizer or anything. Everything that seed needs is actually in that seed. Everything that plant needs is in that seed. So when you're starting plants, even outdoors in the dirt, when you're starting from the seedling stage where you're planting the seed and they're actually sprouting, they don't need any type of extra uh, extra help. They have everything they need from that seed. So um, with that being said, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant these seeds. I'm going to actually set them up, which next week I'll go over the actual um, putting them into the system. By that time, they should have roots and things coming out of this root plug, and you'll be able to see the plant as it progresses into a mature plant. So I'm just going to do weekly updates. Um, explaining the process like I say you can grow any type of plant in hydroponics whether it be a cucumber plant greens you can even grow a tree as long as you have room and you have the right nutrients in the right container you're trying to grow them in you can grow pretty much anything I want us to learn this hydroponics because if you're growing outside you have a lot of elements that you have to deal with when growing things in the soil outdoors you have to deal with animals you have to deal with insects you have to deal with um the weather you have to deal with too much rain not enough rain sun i mean there's a lot of things that can affect your plant's growth when you're growing indoors with hydroponics you control the environment so you you prevent insects from getting into your home or you can control how much light that plant gets or how much water that plant gets um, you can control the nutrients that it gets and things like that. So hydroponics is a better, more efficient way than growing outside. You actually lose a lot less water in hydroponics because it's not being wasted. When you plant plants outdoors, a lot of the water that you plant, uh, that you give to that plant goes into the soil, evaporates into the air. It doesn't even go to the plant itself. So a lot of times you're wasting a lot of water that you could have saved or preserved and put in something towards something else 
when you grow it in the actual hydroponics, what happens is, is that it, um, when you grow it in the hydroponics, you're only using the water that's needed for the uh, plant itself. Alexander, I'm teaching the class right now. Go back in. Yep, here. So, um, I'm glad Alexander came out here because actually, I want I want children to learn how to do this. Alexander's been uh, growing stuff in hydroponics ever since he was four years old. I showed him how to do it four. So he knows how to plant seeds. He knows how to um, he knows how to grow pretty much any plant that I know how to grow. And I'm always I'm always experimenting with uh, new stuff. I actually bought some dwarf corn that I'm going to actually try to grow indoors. And um, so when it comes to hydroponics, you just want to experiment. You have to know like the different systems, which I'll go over in a second. Some plants grow better in one system versus the other. You have to know the plant. So that means you have to <laughs> you have to do a little research about the plant you're trying to grow. So if you're trying to grow a a tree, you can't put that tree in a little tote. It has to be in a big container so it has room to grow and it also has to be in a, an environment where it's getting enough light enough water and also enough space for it to expand when you're growing a hydroponics your plants are going to grow a lot faster than they would normally grow in soil because number one it doesn't have to compete with the soil it doesn't have to compete with the environment and things the water and the nutrients that the plants need are right there so it can just simply suck up the nutrients suck up the water and it, it has everything it needed so, Alexander, you want to show them how to uh, plant a seed? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, he's going to plant some more of the uh, greens for us. And I have a class coming up next Saturday. Good. I have a class coming up next Saturday, actually, for children. It's $15, and they'll actually learn how to... Um, start their own um, lettuce plants. They're actually going to start out growing lettuce. Lettuce is the easiest plant to grow in hydroponics. Um, it's forgiving. When you start growing and you start trying to do more advanced plants like um, tomatoes and peppers and, and uh, squash and things like that, it requires a little bit more work because you've got to do pollination. You have to um, make sure the plant has enough water. When you're growing lettuce, usually the lettuce will grow within a month. So if we start these seeds today, put them in the, in the system next week, by the, by the end of October, we'll have a whole lettuce crop. Um, so did you guys have any questions before I talk about some of the different um, systems? Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I see your text. So you just keep planting those and put them in here, okay? All right, so some of the systems that you grow plants in are um, there's deep water culture, which is the first system that we're going to, that I actually teach people how to do. It's called Hello. deep water culture or DWC. What it is is that you have a tote full of, how do you get the systems to do all that? Okay, so let me explain the different systems. Um. Deep water culture. What it is, you have a tote full of water, and basically, um, in that tote, you'll have the water, you'll put the nutrients in that water, you'll mix it up, and you'll have the plant suspended into the water. Okay, good job. Um, the plant's roots will grow down into the water. Now, there's two different, there's two different types of uh, deep water culture. There's one where there's no circulating system. There's no uh, pumps. There's no water, water, air uh, pumps. There's no filters or anything. This is called the cracky method. This is the method I teach people how to grow because it, it requires the least amount of energy. And I know a lot of times people are, um, they're strapped for cash and they don't want to pay extra money for having to run like a whole bunch of uh, pumps and sumps and things like that. So what the cracky method is, you put the plant down into the water but you could create a space between the roots and the, and the level of the water where the roots will grow down, but there's also this air space in there so the roots can still breathe. Um, when you take the class, you'll learn, um, 
you'll actually see when your lettuce starts to grow that there's a space in there where the there had there's called what air roots and then there's the roots that actually go down into the water and they actually the ones that um suck up the nutrients now any plant can grow in the uh cracky method i've grown tomatoes i've grown peppers i've grown uh pretty much a lot of different things hello everybody now if you're not going to have where you're going to create that air space you have to create some type of air in the water so the plant can get oxygen so basically what you're going to do is you'll you'll put a air line into the water and this is deep water culture with a actual air line um this method is usually used for plants that are going to be kept for a long time like when you're growing tomatoes and you're growing peppers and things and you have to have that plant a long time because you got to let it flower, you got to let Mom, it fruit and everything like that. Yes. What is the hole? Just get a different one. Um, so with that, you're going to have to have an air line. But the most important thing that your plant is going to need besides the water and the nutrients, it's going to need some type of light. So when you're growing plants indoors, if you don't have like access to a greenhouse or if you don't have access to a window that gets sun for the majority of the day you're going to have to supplement in some type of artificial lighting um i would suggest you get um these grow lights that i get they're um i forget the name of it agri grow or something like that i have to look it up and i'll, I'll put it in the um the discussion part of this but um this light, it'll, it'll take your plants from seedling all the way to fruiting if you have plants that are actually fruiting, like when it comes to peppers and tomatoes and stuff. It's a full spectrum, uh, high output T5 light. When you come to the class, I explain the different types of lighting and all that, and I'll, I'll explain that as I go on. But I wanted to just like introduce you guys to this concept. Um, there's some other systems that's called NFT, which is nutrient film transfer which is like um, where you take water, you take a stream of water, yeah. and that stream of water goes across the roots and the plants that are suspended into it, and that's how the plants get their nutrients. There's also an ebb and flow system where the water fills up, and then it drains, and it fills up, and it drains, and it's put on a timer, and it goes on throughout the day. Um, there's also a, a system called aeroponics where you actually spray a mist of water onto the roots. I know I'm sorry, having some uh, technical difficulties. Um, a lot of you, um, wait a minute, hold on. Will there be a major change in light view in the lights? If you use the high output fluorescent lights, um, no. If you use, um, oh, their name is, is Metal halide lights, these are the ones that people when they're growing weed, they actually get caught because these, these lights, they take up a lot of energy and they give off a lot of heat. You don't have to use metal halides. Um, like I say, if you get these full spectrum T5, they'll take your plant from seed to, um, to fruiting. You can also get LEDs, but they are really expensive. And I, most households are not going to be able to afford buying that many LEDs to grow a plant. So basically, um, the fluorescent lights are the good lights. If you get T8s from like a hardware store, they do good growing like lettuce and things, but when it comes to like tomatoes and the more advanced plants, it doesn't do very well with those. Um, let's see, some more systems. Oh, the aeroponics. I know you guys have seen those towers and they always claim that they're aeroponic hey, towers. Wilson. That's our cousin. Um, but those are actually an NFT system. What happens is the water, it pumps up through that tube and then it just rains back down on the, on the roots. It's not a true aeroponic system where it's actually creating a mist. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? I know it cut off a second ago saying it had a bad connection. Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. Um, but those uh, towers that they sell where you can grow a lot of plants, they're not a true aeroponic system because they don't use a mist. Okay, 
Who you what? What are you going to say? Um, I'm going to say if you play blue kale, what seed is it? It's, it's blue kale seed. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, with a hydroponic system, you got to have water, you got to have the nutrients, and you got to have light for your plant to actually succeed. So, um, with that being said, do you guys have any questions? I'm trying to answer them as I see them pop up on here, but do you have any right now? I got one. What's your question? How do plants even grow like that? They I mean, God made this? Like, he made the plants grow? Well, you you actually, he does, but you actually have to give them nutrients and water and stuff so they can grow. And sunlight. Sunlight that, is very important. Is that a good question? Yeah. <laughs> but there, like I told you guys before, the most important component is the light. If you don't have the right light or you don't have enough light, your plants are not going to be able to carry out photosynthesis, which means they will actually end up dying. Photosynthesis is like... Uh, it's like the food for them besides just the nutrients. If they don't have that sunlight, they can't carry out their normal body functions. Or not body function, but normal plant functions. They can't do what they need to do. I bought an arrow garden back in 2005. I had a lots of basil. Yeah, I mean, it does work, but they're, they're marketing it as something that it's not. It's not really a aeroponic system. I always recommend starting with lettuce or any type of green vegetable. Start with lettuce first because it grows so fast, and you yeah. you actually you actually can um, perfect can I, the technique. Can I talk for a second? Go ahead. And you get to the medium stages and the hard stages <laughs> until you know how to grow them. <laughs> um. So I would recommend starting out with lettuce. That's what I usually start everybody with when I do the um, hydroponic in, in, intro classes. I start them out with lettuce, and you wouldn't believe how many people actually fail with growing just the lettuce. I mean, it's a plant. It's a living being. You have to take care of it. You have to check on it. You, do, I mean, once the lettuce starts to take off, you can just kind of like set it and forget it, but you still need to periodically come and check on it. Another thing, I know a lot of people bring in their plants like during the winter time, uh, just to overwinter, and then they want to put them back outside. If you're going to do that and you're actually going to start a hydroponic system, you need to check those plants first because what will happen is you'll bring insects into the house from those plants and then those insects will find your hydroponic plants and they'll attack it and then you'll have an issue with insects in your house. Um, unless you're going to release a whole bunch of ladybugs and stuff, you're not going to want to have to deal with a, a, a aphid outbreak or a white fly outbreak or scales or whatever else you may bring in from the outside. What is it that you need to say? Um, if the white butterfly comes to your garden and eat the, like, the kale or lettuce, I don't, I forgot. Yes, yeah, so that's the cabbage worm. So when, you, when you're when you bringing in your plants to overwinter, you need to check them for insects. Because if you don't, you're going to bring insects into your home and then you're going to have problems with your other plants as well because those insects will leave those plants and they'll start feeding on um, if you're growing stuff in hydroponics or even if you have already indoor house plants, you'll infest them with bugs. So how many of you have actually grown something in hydroponics? Nobody. Give them a chance to answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are anybody have any questions? Any more questions? I do. I want them to ask the questions. I can answer your questions later. All right, I would suggest you, um, like I say, start with lettuce. Yes. 
Uh, the one I always start with in the class is called Black Seeded Simpson Lettuce. It grows very quick. Yo, like I said, you'll have a lettuce crop in about a month. Most lettuce grows in about eight, I'm mean, sorry, four to six weeks. And once you perfect the lettuce, then you can start and you can even start growing like kale or something. Kale grows very fast too. But I, I always recommend the lettuce because it's, for, it's very forgiving. Say if you don't have the right pH or something, lettuce will still grow. When you don't have the right pH for another plant, say like a tomato plant, it'll, it'll affect the growth. It'll affect the, the fruiting. It'll affect the, the, uh, the flowering stage and things like that. Where your uh, cherry tomatoes on the arrow garden... I never taste them. It just sounds good. I um I also have a a YouTube channel. Okay, Alex. He was trying to attack the plant. I have a YouTube channel. It's uh, Urban Farm Sister, and that's S I S T A. And I have a video on there showing you guys how to start out um, doing a basic cracky system growing lettuce. So it'll, it'll walk through the steps of how you can build your own little system and start the lettuce. And then, like I say, once you have a, if you have proper lighting and things, you'll have a crop of lettuce within a month or so. And when, when your lettuce actually grows, it's, it's best not to harvest the whole plant. If you just take a few leaves, the plants will still grow. You can keep that lettuce plant alive for at least three to four months just by taking the leaves on the outside the plant actually grows from the center so if you take the outside leaves which are the more the older leaves and you just uh, harvest those it'll generate more once the lettuce starts to grow tall yeah. that's what it's called bolting it'll it'll start to try to flower then and usually it does that when the temperature has been increased uh, beyond like 70 degrees lettuce and a lot of leafy green vegetables are actually Cool weather vegetables, they grow better when it's, when it's below 75 degrees. Anything above that is going to force that plant to start flowering and making seeds. Wait, Mom. So that's why when you're growing lettuce outside and when it gets to like the middle of July, August, and you see your lettuce went from this little short plant to this really, really tall plant and it starts to flower, that's called bolting. They do not like hot weather. It causes them to go into that stage where they want to uh, flower and seed. Can they hear me? Yes. Oh, I thought if you had the headphone thing, you they can't they hear. They can hear you. everything you're saying right now. So, anybody else have any questions? I'm gonna do a update, like I say, next week, and I'm going to um, show you guys what the plants look like that we planted tonight. What they look like next. Sunday. She's right. And then um, I'll go and show you guys what a actual system looks like. Like I said, I have a class coming up next Saturday for children. And then the following week on the 8th, I have another class for children, but it's actually involving talking about bees. But I have the adult Yay. class that same day um, in the e later on in the evening. I think it's about 3:30, and it's actually going to Excuse talk me? about uh, starting a hydroponic system, but it's it's geared more towards adults, so it's not going to be like the children's class. So, anybody have any questions? If not, I'm going to sign off for now. I'm getting ate up by mosquitoes out here. <laughs> now, go in the house then. All right. Well. I'll I will um, post you. this video, and like I say, next week we'll do another update. All I'll right. see you next week. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye. Hi, everyone. My mom is going to teach you hydroponics today. So if you didn't see the first episode, so... Hi everyone. My hey name is everybody. Ale My name is Alexander. Um 
My mom is going to teach you new hydroponics today. Yep, last week we started some seeds. Um, I just wanted to give you guys an update on them. Um, these are actually some um, melon seeds, some corn, um, cantaloupe. And I even started a, um, can't think of it right now, I'll think of it in a second. But um, I just want to show you what the plants actually look like once they've been growing for a week. Actually, these have been growing for a lot less, but I started these way after the fact. But here we have the uh, root plug, and we actually have the plant in here now. And you can see the roots are coming through the plug. That's what you want in a hydroponic system. You want the roots to be coming out of the plant. Hold on a second. Um, when the roots come out, that means you, you can put it into the system now, and it'll be able to actually um, take up the water that's actually in the bottom of the system. What's your question, Alexander? What are those little white things? The roots? Yep, that's the roots. You want to hold that and show them the roots? Camera focus. The little white. Camera focus. The little white things are the roots. And if you didn't see the first episode, I just started. If you didn't see it, go check it out. Yeah, Before we. Before uh, we're done, and we're done. Okay. So yeah, we had started seeds last week. Um, that video's on my wall. If you go under my videos on uh on my Facebook uh, profile, you'll be able to see the other uh, when we actually started these seeds. So these plants are actually ready to go into the system. The uh, other plants we had started, which were kale, their roots haven't started showing through the um, through the root plug yet, so they're not ready to go in. But I want to show you how different plants look. So this is actual corn that I'm going to start and I'm going to grow in a hydroponic system. Look at and that big have, root. And we have one long, we call this the tap root. And, and, go ahead. and if you're at church right now, um, you can see this later on your computer if you're my mom's fan. <laughs> um so I also started some tomato plants but they haven't started to sprout yet. Tomatoes take a little bit more time to actually germinate as well as peppers. They have to have high humidity and also have to have um a lot of warmth. So you can't start them if if the temperature is, is really low um because they won't germinate. It'll take them a long time to germinate if they even do. Um, so here we have an actual, this is going to be what is called. Um, the stems. The they're stems. called uh, some type of watermelon, but it gets stays small. It grows about 3 to 10 pounds. And um, with that small size, you're able to grow this indoors. So all these plants that I've started, I'm going to use some of them for my classes, which are coming up this month. Um, I have my intro uh, hydroponics class on October, I believe it's the 12th. It's at 1 o'clock to uh, 2.30. And there you'll learn how to actually grow lettuce. And I'll introduce you to the whole concept of hydroponics. So you'll learn about different systems and things. You'll actually start your own seeds. And hopefully by uh, the end of, by the, close to the end of November, you'll actually have a crop of lettuce. It usually takes about 30 days for the lettuce to grow. Now, if you're growing other plants like um, like melons and things, they're going to take a lot longer. So um, there's a lot of things that you have to do to make sure they stay alive that long. I have a question. What's your question? Because I think because the seeds, uh, I mean the watermelon are eating, mm -hmm. and that's why they take a long time, like, like two months. Oh yeah. It, no, well, it, the plant itself, when you're growing a melon or you're growing a cucumber or a squash, what happens is is that um, the plant ha goes through different life stages. It goes through the germination stage, a vegetative stage, then it goes through a flowering stage, and then a fruiting stage. When you get to the flowering stage, um, if your plants are not outside to access um, with access to pollinators what happens is you're going to have to hand pollinate 
and it takes those plants a long time to get to that point so um you won't have a melon in 30 days but you could have lettuce you could have basil you can have kale you can have any type of leafy green but if you're having a plant that's going to actually have to flower and you're going to have to hand pollinate and things it takes time for number one the flower to develop then number two once you pollinate for the actual fruit to develop and mature um, so that's all a process and I teach that in all my classes if you go to my website which is kiwi.produce I'm sorry kiwiproduce.farm and that's q-u-i-w-i produce.farm you can go there and see all the classes that I have available um, I'm also teaching a melon class a class on how to grow tomatoes peppers and eggplants and also a class on how to grow mushrooms mushrooms are not a plant so it's a whole different concept a way of growing those because they have different stages right <clears throat> and so um and start with lettuce every time because those grow fast every time right so when you take actually take the class um which i'll have some online i also have some in person here in cincinnati You'll start with lettuce because it's so easy to grow. You can't mess it up. There's a lot of things that you have to know when it comes to growing a hydroponics. You have to have the right lighting. And you also have to have the right pH of the water, the right nutrients. Like this. Grow the seed first, water it, give it sunlight. Right. But if you don't have that, um, your plants are not going to flourish. That's even if you're growing outdoors. you got to have the right things for the plants to actually grow. So like I said, it takes light. It takes um nutrients it takes water of course and if you got to watch your system to make sure the water's not evaporating or it's not leaking out somewhere because then your plants will be able to grow oh well i said i also started some um earlier i couldn't remember the name of the tree it's called moringa so i started some moringa seeds someone had given these seeds to me from oh where did they live somewhere in the caribbean i believe they had sent me some of the uh some of these seeds and so I'm going to try to grow a few of them some of them in soil and actually some of them in hydroponics to see if I can actually do that um so I started those they haven't started to germinate they're still as you can see they're still just seeds right now um but with that being said I have all these other plants that are starting to germinate what you'll find is when you're growing plants plants like greens and lettuce and things like that they actually germinate very quickly, even like when it comes to um, melons and things. These were just started. Melon squash. Melons, yeah, squash, cucumbers, they're all in the same family. But these were just started, I believe I did them, I put them in here on Wednesday. And see, they're already growing. Um, these plants grow very fast. So when, like, when you're growing uh, squash and things outside and, and uh, zucchini. They take like a long time. They really don't take a long time to grow. Um, like. Now if you're growing tomatoes and stuff, it's going to take some time. And actually this corn that I'm actually trying to grow in a hydroponic system, it's a fast growing corn that actually grows well in cold climates. Not normal corn, when you're growing it, it has to be warm. And it has to be at a certain temperature and certain amount of water and things that the plant will get for it to flourish. These are actually dwarf um, corn plants, which they won't go over uh, four feet. The average height is about two to three feet, but they'll produce two ears of corn. Now, I've never tried to grow a hydroponics, but it's a plant, so I'm just going to try it and see what happens. Um, but with this corn, I should have... Ears of corn within 55 days. So, hold on. So with that, um, we're going to follow the progress of this corn here. I'm going to actually try to grow these 12 plants to see. I actually only have 11 that actually germinated. One of them didn't come up. But um, I'm going to see if I can get that to grow. So what's your question? Did you learn how to make hydroponics when you are a kid? No, I actually learned hydroponics um, as I was an adult. So, not even in Girl Scouts? No, I didn't go to Girl Scouts. So, this is one of the systems that you'll learn how to uh, build in the class. Um, and the system is called the Cracky Growing System. Basically, what you're going to do is you'll have this tote and it'll have, you'll drill the holes and things in it. And you'll actually have these net cups 
And what you do is you will take that plant and put it down in the net cup. Depending on the plant, you may want to cut out the bottom so that the plant can go down further into there. So like this one, since it's a, a, a vining type plant, I want it to go down a little further and I'll put some actual perlite up here to prevent uh, light from getting down into the system. But you'll take your plants and you'll put them in there like this. And I'm just using this one as an example. These are actually going to go in a bigger tote because they're bigger plants. This is what I would use to actually grow uh, forward heads of lettuce. But you take the plants like this and you put them in there. And then in here, you can lift this up. So you can actually, you'll put the Yeet. water and the nutrients in here that the plant will need. You'll have to weigh that out. You have to pH the water. You'll have to test it to make sure that it's right. And then um, what you do is you'll put the plants back in here. Now when you fill it up, you want to make sure that the water is touching the bottom of the plant. And this system, like I said last week, like I said last week, that there's no um, pumps or air pumps or any type of water pumps in this system. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a space between the roots of the plant and the um, and the, the base of the water underneath. So as the plant grows down, these roots that are, that'll be hanging out, that they're not hanging out yet, but these roots, when the plant matures, these roots will actually grow down into the water and they'll be floating in the water and then there'll actually be some roots up here that actually shoot out and these actually help the plant breathe up here. So if you're growing a plant that uses a lot of water, say you're growing a melon or something, and you have to refill your reservoir, you want to be conscious that you're not actually filling it all the way back up because you will drown your plant and we, you can kill it. You don't always kill it. What happens is it'll kill it to a point to where like all the leaves will turn colors, but then it'll start to reroot itself and start to grow again. But then that causes you to have to start from pretty much the beginning again, um, getting your plant to... A level that it can actually grow and actually make the produce that you're trying to grow now all this can occur indoors you don't have to do this outside but you can put these systems outside if you're going to put them outside though you need to make sure they're either there's either some type of canopy over them or you put something over the the net pot itself so rain and things do not get down in there another issue that you'll have if you put your plants outdoors is um you'll have an issue with mosquitoes and they'll actually lay in their eggs in there and you'll have mosquito larva and you don't want that. So what you can do is add what is called BT, uh, it's Bacillus thuringiensis, is a bacteria that you can put into the water and it's done by these things called mosquito dunks that you can buy at like uh, the hardware stores and things like that or you can get them off Amazon. But basically it has that BT in there, you can float it in the water and it'll keep mosquito larva from actually maturing. In your water it does not affect your plants um, it's not it's not deadly or anything to people or animals the only thing that it affects are mosquito larvae and some other types of flies um, so that will keep mosquito populations down in your system if you decide to put them outdoors also if you're indoors you can also um, you can also put the BT in there as well as you got mosquitoes that get into your house and things. Um, they will lay eggs in the water and they will reproduce in your home and you will have them buy eggs. So it's up to you if you put the BT in there or not. It won't hurt it. It won't take away if you're indoors. But just know that if you get mosquitoes or anything in your house that likes water, they can use this as a source of a uh, place to reproduce and live. You want to say something? <laughs> So, did anybody have any questions or anything about um, hydroponics, setting up a system? Like I said, I have my first intro class coming up on October 12th here in Cincinnati. I'm also going to schedule an online class probably that same day, but later in the day. Um, you'll learn how to grow lettuce. Um, I think with the uh, classes I used to offer where you could learn how to make the system and you could take one home. I then want to offer two types of classes within that class where you can learn the information but you don't have to take anything home so it'll be a lesser fee or you can pay the full price. You get to take the, the thing home and I can help you through the process of growing your plants and things. 
I'm just trying to get people more engaged and I don't know um, I don't know what else to do so I'm just trying to come up with all these different ideas um, the website is uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash Kiwi which is Q U I W I produce P R O D U C E dot farm so that's Kiwi produce dot farm and I'll post it also in the um, uh, the comment section or you can go to my um, Instagram page which is urban farm sister and that's S I S T A and it also has the link to my website there um, does anybody else have any other questions any questions about growing any type of plant it doesn't have to be even hydroponics just questions in general um. Um. <laughs> mm. oh. I am proud of you and your desire to educate people in the field of agriculture. This is invaluable, Nadia. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. I appreciate it. What you have to add? Um. Yay! <laughs> Do you have any questions, Alexander? Um, how does corn have those little, like, leaves? How do they have that little leaf? Which little leaf? Like those two, like those two leaves that hold the corn up. The stalk? Oh, we'll, we'll talk about more about corn as that corn starts to grow. We'll, we'll talk about the, um, the anatomy of it and things like that. Right now, this is what is called the, uh, cotyledon stage where it's just the first leaves and things like that as this matures you'll you'll see it stalking out so it's actually looking pretty good I also want to say when you're starting plants from seed you don't have to give them fertilizer um, they have everything they need in that seed to start for at least the first few weeks um, after they start getting secondary leaves is when you want to start putting in fertilizers or any type of nutrients that the plant may need to actually grow the vegetative stage at least um, but when it comes to like lettuce and stuff it takes a lot less nutrients versus if you're growing a tomato which takes it like I told you it has different stages of life so it's gonna have to require a lot more nutrients and things for it to grow yes um, So, does anybody else have any questions? Do you have any questions about anything outside of hydroponics or plants? Do you have any questions about um, chicken, bees? What's your question? Why do mushrooms have different lives of stages? Mushrooms are actually a fungus, so they grow differently Ooh. than plants. They're actually decomposers, which means they break down material um, in the environment. So, like I said, I have a, a, a class coming up about teaching how to grow mushrooms. And you'll start growing um, oyster mushrooms. And that's a long process to grow mushrooms. You're not going to have mushrooms like in like a month or so. You have to start out with the, um, you have to make what's called the a spawn jar. We actually use rye grains and things, and you actually inoculate it with um, mushroom mycelium. Then, after you do that, you let that grow. Then you have to take that spawn jar, and you have to actually inoculate it into a substrate, which when you're growing oyster mushrooms, you actually grow them on straw. Now, if you're growing things like button or portobello, they actually grow on horse manure, which most people do not know that. But yeah, they use composted horse manure to grow um, portobello and a um, button mushrooms. So when you're growing mushrooms, you need to know the type of substrate that those mushrooms actually grow out in the wild. And that, that way you'll have success when you're actually growing the mushrooms in your home. If you're growing like shiitakes and things, they actually grow on wood as well, just like the oysters will do. Um, just they don't grow well on straw. So you have to know where to, you have to know the mushrooms life cycle. You have to know what type of substrates they grow on, or you will not have success in growing mushrooms. Also, with growing mushrooms, you have to make sure you're 
you're sterile as possible because what happens is you'll have other microorganisms growing with your mushrooms that could either number one out compete them so they won't grow or they can um uh actually be deadly to you some some fun fungi that grow are actually like black mold and things it's not healthy for you to actually breathe those in it could be deadly so you need to know what you're doing you need to make sure you're sterile and clean uh, when you're starting your jars when you're starting your your cultures and things like that and i'll go over all that in the class um that class i believe is around november 5th i don't know if i'm gonna offer an online version of that because it's kind of hard to teach you how to do sterile technique over TV, like, I mean, over the internet or something like that. You actually have to be there doing it so you can get the feel of it. Uh, I might just do, like, a video or something explaining the process, and then maybe people can learn from that way. Um, so, anybody else have any other questions before we get out of here? They use photosynthesis. They have chlorophyll in them that makes them green. That's so cool though. Every time they start off at green till they change the color. Yep. Like so I'm going to sign off now. Remember to visit my website, which is uh, kiwiproduce.farm, or you can visit my Instagram at. Uh, it's Urban Farm Sista. That's U R B A N F A R M S I S T A. And I have pictures on there, um, things I've grown. I teach science concepts on there. Um, I put articles. Uh, I talk about um, product recalls, food recalls, um, outbreaks, and things like that. So. There's a lot of information on my Instagram page if you want to visit that. Um, the same information actually goes to my Facebook, uh, Urban Farm Sister Facebook page as well. So if you want to learn and you don't have Instagram, you can go there. I also have a YouTube, which is YouTube.com, and uh, it's uh, also Urban Farm Sister. And I have videos. I actually have a video explaining how to set up a simple hydroponics cracky system in your home. Um, uh, and I also have a Twitter and then I have other sites as well, but I want you guys to just concentrate on those right now um, as far as learning hydroponics and uh, basic gardening and things like that. So, with that being said, thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have any we'll questions, see you next time. if you have any questions, like I say, uh, send me a message. You can send me an email at urbanfarmsister at gmail.com. Um, we'll be back next week. So we'll give you an update on the plants and their systems and things like that. All right. I got one. Till next time. I want I want to tell a question to um turn off it. What what's your question? Um everything is like a different color except for lettuce. Lettuce still stay green. Right, that has it has chlorophyll and stuff in there to make it green. Okay, color class. That one was a question. All right, well, thanks, guys. If you like the content that I present, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload new videos.